Um, hope everybody is doing well. Uh, you can see me right now. It's weird. I can't see myself. Okay. Can you see me? Okay. All right. We're going to go ahead and uh, start everybody and uh, hopefully um, uh, it's an enjoyable video, um, uh, live session and uh, hoping to get um, interaction and uh, making it fun. And obviously we have some bubbles today. So uh, let's get started here. And um, so part of the Fizz Fanatic fun is uh, who is who am I? I'm Mark, <laughs> co-founder uh, with my wife Terry and winemaker of August Hill and Only Sparkling Company, and a bubble fanatic. And uh, excited to do this. And uh, so the next thing is is who are you? So we're going to send out a um, a quick poll here uh, that should be coming up. Um, we're going to try it out. Uh, this is. All right, here's the poll. How would you best describe your interest in sparkling wine? Um, I prefer bubbles over all other types of wine all the time. I typically choose something other than bubbly, but do enjoy them time to time. And I like bubbly for holidays and special occasions. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of time, uh, about 20 seconds or so to see as people chime in. All right, so as far as the people are chiming in now, obviously we have a lot of bubbly fans and uh, um, all types of fans. So, so, uh, um, so I want to just go over real quick is what hopefully everybody has in their bubble pack is they got six bottles of bubbly. Uh, then also is you got two new flight glasses and the, the um, the flight glasses, uh, I'm excited um, because uh, they're, they're great for all types of wine, but um, I really love the sparkling wines out. And then as we're trying and, and if there's questions or comments, I think it's always nice when uh, comments are coming back uh, talking about the same glass because definitely glasses can uh, change uh, the flavors and taste. And then uh, the other... Uh, thing that everybody's gonna be getting is the uh, two sparkling wine stoppers. So everybody should see the sparkling wine stoppers. Um, so I'm gonna share the results real quick on the poll and everybody should be able to see that. So, uh, um, so the people that have signed in so far is uh, um, the majority as well. Uh, we have a lot of the bubbly fans. Okay. Oops. All right. So the um, I want to just go over the quick bundle so we, uh, um, everybody knows uh, for sure how we're planning on everything working. So today. Um, if you have bundle one, um, you'll have ISC Brut and uh, the August Hill Winery Mardi Gras. And if you chose bundle two, which is all Illinois Sparkling Company, you're going to be getting um, the ISC Brut and the Demi Sec. And today, uh, the education session is on under pressure. Uh, then next week, I'll be talking about uh, making it. Um, getting more in the, um, a bit overview and details on uh, the different methods of doing bubbly of, uh, and um, the two wines that we will be talking about next week, uh, everybody will be getting or has is the Pet Nat and uh, the ISC Sec. And then uh, in two weeks, we'll, we'll be covering the ISC Ombre Rosé uh, for the bundle one, and then uh, the August Hill Almond Infusion for uh, 
also in bundle one, and then bundle two will be the ombre rosé with uh, the ISC ensemble. So under pressure, and it, it, when I was trying to uh, come up with the topics in which order, actually this one, um, in many ways, from a process standpoint, probably makes most sense to do it last. However, uh, from a safety standpoint, and then as we want to be drinking wine and that, I, I feel the importance of, of safety that I wanted to do it first. And, uh, and so I, I, th I think it still easily fits. Uh, um, so anyway, um, we're going to send out another quick poll question. We just have a couple in here. And uh, the, the next poll is, is basically, how would you describe your comfort level of opening a sparkling wine bottle? And uh, um, um, Sorry, Mark, a little delay. We had some issues on Facebook, and so I'm just going live on Facebook now, and so now I've got <laughs> this poll running. Okay. All right, welcome all Facebook people. <laughs> Sorry about the delays. You really haven't missed anything. I just uh, started talking about um, the. Um, I started just talking about what it is in everybody's uh, packages. So, um, so again, you didn't hear much, but uh, or miss much. Um, I guess you didn't hear anything. So anyway, the the poll actually, I just saw it pop up. Um, and it's uh, um, how comfortable are you opening a bottle of bubbly? Um, all right, many people are not uh, too worried about it. You apprehensive, and then uh, um, so far, uh, not no one that's uh, um, afraid of it, which is great. Um, however, it's it's not an uncommon thing of seeing people who are uh, comfortable in opening opening bubbly. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start. Uh, okay, the, we. Oh, so I guess I should have shared it. Yeah. So here, just quickly. Um, oh, I did. Okay, I'm all messed up. Sorry. All right. So the first topic is uh, just talking about opening a bottle. And uh, I feel um, it's very critical of understanding how to open a bottle. And, uh, and I'm going to open our, uh, the brute right now. And so uh, do you, I don't know if you guys opened up your bottles, but one of the things, and even though you might say you've opened it, is uh, I have actually been to restaurants and uh, the waiter has scared me. Uh, and the reason they have scared me is they'll take this bottle and they'll take this off. And the very first thing that they'll do is they'll take off the wire cage and they'll remove the wire cage and then they'll take it off and put the wire cage off to the side or whatever and just hold the bottle um, um, with the cork with no cage on it. And uh, basically when you take this cage off, this is, a, it's a loose cannon. And, um, and even though most of the time, and it's a definitely a tight fit, uh, that it will stay in there, but 5% but of the time or even uh, more or less, the cork will fly off. And, uh, and it can be a serious issue because, uh, um, you know, it can be a laughing. Some people might think it's funny. However, until someone gets hurt, um, it's it, it's no longer funny, but it, so at our tasting room and, and what we highly suggest is uh, we have a sparkling wine opener and that basically allows us to grip the bottle first and then uh, um, let's see if I can and then we can open up the cage then. Um, the other option is is to get a towel and put a towel over it. And that last option is just using your hand. And, uh, um, but one of the cautions things about using your hand is, is I would not suggest um, putting your hand like this. 
because once you take that cage off, um, even though you think you have it, it is like if you're just a little bit loose, that cork will fly out of your hand. And, uh, and I've seen that happen. Um, so keep your thumb over it. Um, and so, uh, so, the, so I'm gonna do it without our, our opener because most people don't have it. And so as you can hopefully see is uh, um, the thumb is over it and then I'm going and opening it slowly. Yeah, and twist the bottle. Okay, and there I have it open. And a little bit of um, bubbles coming up. So um, I highly suggest right now, if you guys have not opened a, a, a bottle of bubbly, is, is uh, um, go ahead and open one right now because uh, um, choose your favorite one uh, because it might help you get through my presentation here. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna pour myself a little bit of brut while you guys may be opening your bottle. Whoops. Okay. All right. Oh, did I go backwards? I did. Okay. Um, so the next thing I'm going to actually talk about, these two topics are going to be really quick, is the sparkling wine stoppers. And uh, these are great. And I sent to uh, probably because uh, most people don't need it because they'll probably go through their bottles. But I just want to make sure since we're sending two bottles and talking about them that you're not afraid to open up both bottles. Because uh, um, champagne cork can't fit back That's in. That's the minus ones. Let's see what happens. That goes away. Okay, so uh, a champagne cork can't fit inside uh, the regular bottle. Um, a regular cork can, however, a regular cork um, could be pushed out once the bottle uh, builds pressure. So anyway, we have a number of different stoppers. Uh, we sell this one, which is uh, you just push it down. It's one of my favorite, push it down and then it just clips around it. The, the big thing on any sparkling wine stopper is, is the next day or whenever you go to use this bottle, the pressure is going to build back up. So you need to make sure you, your hand is over the top of this before you take it off. Right now we have no pressure on because I just had it open. Um, so that, those are the, that's the stoppers you got, but uh, you possibly, if you've been to the or uh, bought any at the taste room, you might have one of these plastic ones. Um, they're they're quick and uh, easy to handle, um, less expensive but less durable. And sometimes uh, I've seen them; um, they don't hold the pressure as well. Bad or worse. And then the the final one we have is the uh, the one that was the original one we got, which is is nice also. And it just, um, but again, you have to press down and flick it off the edges. So those are the different uh, stoppers we have. And, and um, I, I believe they're great. Who's texting me? All right, so then the next thing we're gonna um, talk about is uh, what makes up the pressure in the bottle. And then we're gonna go in and what causes the pressure to change in the bottle. And then all this stuff, uh, if I don't tell you enough, your head is gonna probably explode because uh, I kind of get into details here, but I think, uh, I think uh, some of you guys might enjoy this. And uh, the last part is gonna be uh, going over the tasting notes and then finishing up with some questions. All right, so here we start. Here's my, my bottle that I um, have, I got my little laser pointer here. So we'll be going through a couple uh, of scenarios here to help you understand. So just so uh, our bottle of wine here is made up of, of the wine, which is all the, the blue bubbles. And then what I'm showing in here is, is uh, sparkling wine, had the CO2 is actually dissolved in the wine. So you actually 
um, don't see the bubbles until the bubbles come out of solution, which that's going to be in two weeks when I talk about how do bubbles come out of solution. Um, and we'll, we'll have some uh, hopefully uh, interesting and fun discussion on that. And then uh, up here is the CO2 gas, um, which is the, the area that also you don't see. Uh, but when, when uh, we open up a bottle, um, this is the part that uh, um, it, the gas that's coming out. So as I talk about this is the, the, the um, open bubbles is a gas form and the, the closed one is a liquid form. So, real quick, are we supposed to be seeing something? Maybe I can't see it. Is there something I'm hope um, uh, yeah, I think uh, yes, you're supposed to be see seeing something. My um, slide. Okay, let me try something else. Sorry. No, that's all right. Can you see the slide, Amanda? No, I can't see it, but maybe I'm not in something right. This is only my second time I've ever Zoomed. <laughs> we can see it. We can see it, Mark. Okay. All right, I'm gonna um, continue on here. And, uh, um, okay, now I need to get off my corner. I'm sorry, everybody, I'm also, a novice at this. All right, so the first part is uh, talking about pressure in the bottle of um, comparing um, a full bottle of the Illinois Sparkling Company, which is the brute you have, and then like a full bottle of the Mardi Gras. Uh, the, the ISC is gonna be at a champagne level of pressure, and that's at six atmospheres of pressure. And uh, August Hill, Mardi Gras, and the Almond Infusion, all those products are down around four and a half atmospheres of pressure, um, which is similar to uh, where Prosecco's are. So in a bottle, um, this is kind of what the, uh, the champagne um, basically has a lot more dissolved CO2 in it, and which means it has a lot more um, gas bubbles, and uh, here it ha this has a lot less. Uh, so in comparison though, is like it looks like, wow, there's not any bubbles in there. Well, we're talking in the, like if champagne had three billion bubbles in this bottle, I mean, we're talking a um, huge, huge number of bubbles, then Prosecco and August Hill Mardi Gras would be at two billion um, bubbles. But this is more of an illustration that's saying that this is higher and it's actually a third higher in, in pressure than, uh, than the August Hill Mardi Gras. And, how, and so, so the interesting thing about this is one of the big questions that always ask me uh, people is when, uh, how, you know, how long does wine last? And I kind of say, well, it all depends if you're talking still wines or sparkling wines. And, um, and then asking, well, how long will the bubbles last? Well, it, with the sparkling wine stopper, like the one you guys have, and it stays sealed, um, it, it, there's a good ch chance that, I mean, that gas is not gonna escape uh, that, that gets in there. So uh, it, that gas is gonna last as long as until you take it, take it off again. However, um, there could be some a little bit of effects with ox some oxygen effects, but as far as the pressure, um, you won't as long as you use the stoppers. Um, so as I go into the next slide is I'm going to just talk about as, as we go through a bottle here. So we have a full bottle of sparkling wine here and say, um, we pour a couple glasses out of it and we have two thirds of a bottle full. Uh, and then we decide that, okay, um, we're done with the sparkling wine for today. And so we put our stopper on it and overnight, 
what happens is the bubbles that are in solution actually come out and they fill this pressure in the bottle. So, so as you can see, the, the bubbles did come out. Now, in comparison, this is the bottle that I just showed you um, of taking a couple glasses out. This bubble pressure now at, at about two thirds level is gonna be um, similar to what our August Hill Mardi Gras and what Prosecco's are when they're bottled. So, so the champagne bottle definitely already automatically has more pressure. So then you say, well, hey, how are the bubbles gonna be on here? Well, the bubbles are still gonna be very good. There's gonna be a lot of them and, and uh, you're probably not gonna be able to notice actually much of a difference between uh, when you first open the bottle than when the second time. That be that uh, some people will notice, but, but by far the majority of people would not notice uh, a difference um, between these two bottles. Uh, so moving along here is, so say we have this two third full of a bottle and, uh, and we remove the stopper and we're thinking, hey, uh, this is the next day because it, it filled up the pressure. So the same day, it doesn't, this pressure does not, this pressure here does not build up over, um, like, in five minutes. I mean, it takes, overnight, you're going to definitely get pressure in this bottle. So the next day, you decide, hey, you know, I'm thinking, uh, I'm gonna, um, or, you know, what? a better scenario here, I'll say, is, is I'm going to open the bottle and then go, Ask my uh, ask Terry, my wife, and say, "Hey, do you want some sparkling wine?" And uh, and so I open it, and she says, "Well, no, we're leaving right now to go out to dinner." And uh, and I'm like, "Oh, okay." Well, all of a sudden, I said, "Okay, well then I'm going to close this stopper back up," and uh, this is what's going to happen is I, since I released all the pressure here, is then the next day when I come back, is I actually lost this pressure and, and, and it's built up in here. Now, it, the wine's not gonna be flat because again, there's a lot of bubbles in here. Um, but it, all I'm trying to illustrate here is the more time, even though you could have a full bottle, you opening it and then closing it and then waiting the next day to open it, is you are gonna start losing bubbles and that's what's happening. But again, is if you left this bottle like this for a year, it's still gonna have that pressure. That, pre that pressure is not escaping with, uh, um, with the time. Come in. Come in with your glass. Here I am. So now I'm gonna show another example, coming back uh, to our full bottle again. And, uh, and we decide that, hey, we're going to drink, uh, basically, we're drinking three quarters of a bottle. And it's like, oh, we should just drink the finish. That's, I think, most of us do. Um, however, it's like, well, maybe I want a glass for tomorrow. And you might think, well, it's never going to be good um, it, leaving um, much wine into it. However, like on a champagne, when it um, has a lot of bubbles, it actually... Um, is going to still build up some pressure. And I, I don't think you're going to, there again, most people, even at like a quarter full on a very first time opening a bottle and you covering it um, is actually, I, from my experiences, I've seen it show pretty good bubbles. However, you are going to lose some of the bubbles. And the lower you get, obviously, I mean, the lower the pressure is because all this CO2 has to come out to um, to basically equalize the pressure in the bottle. So that, uh, and I kind of probably skipped over this when I should have showed the very first bottle, is, is basically as bubbles are coming out of solution, they're gonna come out of solution all the way to the point until the pressure here matches what the pressure of the dissolved CO2 is in, is in the liquid not allowing any more CO2 to come out. 
So I was showing you um, earlier about the um, two thirds closed bottle. And this is after the first opening. And then here is after a quarter after the first opening. And you can see again, is it makes sense is, is this one definitely is gonna have a little bit less pressure. But again, I think it would be um, acceptable, especially on the first time um, opening that bottle. All right. And I'm, I'm going to be waiting on questions at the end. And so I think the first part uh, that I was going over those bottles are going to be a lot easier to follow. This part, I, I'm kind of bringing back a little bit of your high school physics, the ideal gas law. I don't know if you remember that term back then, but it, the ideal gas law is, uh, is PV equals NRT. And what P means is the pressure, pressure in the bottle equals the volume, which in our case, the volume is the bottle itself. And it, it's always gonna, it's basically gonna be constant. The N is the number of molecules of CO2 that's actually in that bottle. And then R is just a regular constant. And then T is temperature. So, um, you know, the, everybody says, oh, you need to chill your bottle um, instead of opening it warm. Well, we do enjoy it better when it's cooler. Uh, so anyway, if, if we have a bottle of wine here, and if we decide to increase the temperature, we're using this ideal gas law, it totally makes sense because if you increase the temperature, and since our bottle, it remains the same, the pressure has to increase. And th this is just the standard that why, why when you, uh, the temperature increases, um, why the pressure increases, this is why it's the actual, um, from physics is the ideal gas law. And um, I'm given a different little bit of example here and I'm comparing uh, the, the, sh the champagne, uh, the ISC to the Mardi Gras. Uh, I forget to put my laser printer on. So I'm comparing an ISC bottle over here with all the bubbles at six atmospheric pressure. And then right here is a bottle of August Hill Winery at uh, 4.5. And so, um, so champagne is if I, um, and if I'm going to um, the August Hill Mardi Gras, and if I reduce the number of CO2 molecules, which I'm putting less CO2 in solution, and if you uh, use this ideal gas law, you actually um, decrease the pressure because everything has to um, balance out. Um, so that is my quick or, uh, discussion on the ideal gas law. So now I'm gonna go over some of our tasting notes. And uh, I'm gonna go over with, uh, I don't know if everybody had a chance to get, uh, order their carry out yet, or are gonna be doing it afterwards. But uh, I highly suggest the Cajun food and fried chicken. Uh, so I already poured our brute. And um, the brute, um, uh, is definitely, uh, this is our workhorse of uh, LNA Sparkling Company. It's the one we produce the most of. Uh, it um, has some nice bubbles going on here in, in which we'll be talking in, and uh, much more about the, the, these bubbles. I don't know if you see in my glass that coming out of the center here. Uh, and, uh, but the brood is, is gonna be drier. It has 10 grams per liter sugar. So it's one of our drier sparkling wines and it uh, crispness. It has um, definitely I always get a little bit of a, the baker uh, cocoa from our yeast aging, but also I get some of this light fruit. And that's what you'll learn more next week, a little bit about what fruit selections and, and why you might use them for the different styles of wines. Um, but I get the, the light uh, lemon, um, I'm going brain dead here. Uh, I get, I actually get a little bit of vanilla on this also. 
very light though. Um, but it, uh, well, everybody, well, if you don't, um, and if you want to open up the brute now, if that wasn't one of the ones you opened, uh, you can um, and taste it with uh, the glass. So the fun thing I really like about brute um, is embracing the acidity of, uh, of the brute. It, it, it definitely is crisp. It wakes up that palate. And, uh, and I think it's incredible with if foods like the cheese, everything like, uh, um, and, and fried food. And so I thought with the brute, uh, this is a great selection for the carry out uh, tonight of the fried chicken. I mean, if you go with fried fish, um, also on the Cajun side, I know loving Cajun connection and their uh, Bubba shrimp. Uh, also just French fries, potato chips, um, even though that's not necessarily on the, the list today, but uh, Brute goes great um, with the, the potato chips too. Um, but I think, you know, if you actually open, um, if you actually open both of the bottles today, which I highly suggest it, is the um, is trying it with your dinner because I think it's always fun to play with the food and your drink. Um, the next one I'm going to do is the Illinois um, the ISC demi sec, and I actually uh, forgot to grab that. I apologize for that, but fortunately, our kitchen is close by, and uh, I'm going to open up the demi sec rose. And um, again, also like with the the sparkling wines, is is typically uh, um, you want to open them on the slower side. Um, I don't know if you can see. Uh, and, and turn the bottle. So, so I'll do it here. And like sometimes it's even open at where you just barely see, I don't know if you can hear. I was at a, um, one of our sparkling wine um, events I was at once. Uh, they had mentioned about um, try opening a bottle of sparkling wine in a movie. I've not done it uh, in a movie theater without making any noise. Um, that's like a, a goal, they say. I have not tried that, but um, so in general, a lot of times is you like to open it slow. Uh, so. Um, There's the demi -sucker. Also, one of the things on the sparkling wines, I, I geek out on sparkling wine and I see uh, the champagnes. But one of the things we actually um, give you information on, so you'll see it on the brood also, is you'll see the batch number, the disgorgement date, um, and the vintage. So the vintage is when uh, the grapes were grown. Um, the batch number, we treat, because Only Sparkling Company is done in the traditional method, we treat it like it's uh, own bottle. Um, everyone has its own unique number. However, uh, the very first four numbers of the batch number, 0117, is actually January of 2017. That's when the initial wine went into the bottle. And then the disgorgement date, um, the bottle that I have is 11 4, um, 19. And so that means it uh, was, the yeast was extracted, uh, taken out on 11 4, 19. So this bottle is, uh, was sitting on Lee's for over uh, just under three years. Um, so it kind of just tells you a little bit about that history of the wine and then what sometimes gives you the idea of what you can expect from it. Uh, so I always have a bottle of Demisec at home here because um, this is one of Harry's favorites. <laughs> and uh, 
Uh, we get the, um, I get always is the cherry notes from the Frontenac grape. Um, and then a little bit of the, the Baker's cocoa uh, chocolate notes on it. Um, this is really fun to pair, especially um, with the Cajun food, uh, I, because I feel like it brings, um, it complements itself with spices. Um, it, it'll, it'll like kind of, uh, it'll make almost um, flavors come to life. Uh, like Cajun Ron does a black and gator. And um, if I'm having the black and gator, I, I go into this or actually even Mardi Gras we'll be talking about, but it's a, uh, it, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Chili brings out the flavor. And in, in, like if you're ever making chili, uh, like stuffed mushrooms with bacon, it'll make bacon pop. Um, a lot of fun with that. Uh, so the demi sec is sitting with 35 grams per liter of sugar. So it's our sweetest um, Illinois sparkling company wine. Um, but it has a lot of acid to it that actually makes the wine float. So it definitely has sweetness, but it, um, nice acidity. And the other thing, and I, I can't even find it now. I have so many things laying around here, but uh, it goes really good with uh, like chocolate. And I had brought some uh, cocoa blue chocolate uh, home with me um, to try it with. And that's what we're doing uh, next Saturday. I don't know if people have seen the chocolate and wine uh, event we're doing with cocoa blue next Saturday, but uh, but it, it, demi sec is not in the pairings, but uh, demi sec is great with the chocolate. It's great with like a chocolate mousse, chocolate cake, and that. So, uh, and then the last one I want to discuss on the tasting notes is the Mardi Gras. Uh, and we will uh, um, we'll go with the sparkling wine stopper again here and uh, open it. Um, and then open it. And then like we do at festivals, one of the fun things that we do, um, maybe everybody can do it with me is on three, we all celebrate and the celebration is just woo hoo. So on three, one, two, three. <laughs> all right. So let me get another glass. Fortunately for me, I have lots of glasses. And here is the Mardi Gras. Again, it's um, the Mardi Gras are sweet catava grape, um, which sweet catava has been a big mover for us. We named Mardi Gras with, uh, um, in conjunction with Cajun Connection because he, uh, they really love the the catava and and, uh, and I was like, well, hey, we need to make the catava, which I call the Jolly Rancher on steroids. We have to make it a party because it's Mardi Gras. And so, uh, so we actually put bubbles in it. So that's uh, the, how Mardi Gras name came to be. Um, but the Mardi Gras um, is, is sitting uh, around 85 grams per liter of sugar. So there's quite a bit more sugar in it. Um, however, I think sweet catawba is, is probably closer to 90 grams per liter of sugar. So catawba, sweet catawba, the, the still wine is actually a hair sweeter than this. And much of that is, is, is we want the acidity, um, a little bit more acidity in the sparkling wine to help the bubbles flow through. Uh, so, um, um, definitely has lots of sweetness, a lot of fruitiness, but the bubbles flow. And that's one of the big things that we like is we, um, Definitely, like it has sweetness and a little bit of sweetness sits on the palate, but it doesn't just, it, the sweetness isn't heavy on the palate. It's, it's kind of light, refreshing, and uh, wanting the bubbles to be basically saying, I want more. So that's kind of a little bit on how and why we make, uh, or, or the, the style of the Mardi Gras. Um, this goes great, uh, I mentioned with the Cajun fruit food. Um, bubbles go great with a lot of a lot of different things and, and we've had fun pairing with the chocolates with um, like peanut butter. Anything peanut butter is like peanut butter and jelly. Um, the, the Mardi Gras is the jelly and bring in the peanut butter. It, it's, it's a phenomenal pairing with anything with uh, 
peanut butter. So that's fun too. Um, so before we uh, take some questions here, I'm gonna, um, I wanna get one more uh, poll out there is I wanna find out which wine did you first open during this session? Did you open the ISC Brut, the Demi Sec Rosé, August El Mardi Gras? We opened both at first, or maybe you're just uh, joining on this session and, and uh, uh, wish uh, we had one of these. All right, as coming in, many of the brutes open first. Oh, and both. So brutes, a lot of people have been open in the brute, which is good. Um, all right, so uh, also just uh, before questions, just a reminder for also next um, week is uh, we're gonna be doing the ISC, uh, the pet nat in the SAC and uh, talking about making it. So now I think I'm gonna open up for quite, well, I'm gonna look at the list here and uh, look at if there's any questions out there, I'm gonna start answering them, but uh, um, I hope Amanda was able to uh, get in. Uh, okay, what's the shelf life? unopened what is the shelf life um oh well okay so that i'll just answer the shelf life so um so the the shelf life on a lot of the the sparkling wines uh depends on the wine a lot of it depends on the aging isc typically uh has more aging potential than the august hill and the the biggest thing that you're gonna see um the change in the wine over time is the evolution of the wine. And so like with the sparkling wine, when we were aging it on the lees, the, the, and I'm gonna talk more about this tomorrow or next week, um, is uh, the yeast integration when it sits and ages is gonna help us um, in a longer run when for the consumer to be able to age it at home. Uh, our August Hill, wines and, and many of like the Proseccos and everything are more on the fruitier side. Um, they're similar to the still wines um, of the sweeter, uh, which are fruitier. And, and so, uh, you know, the first year, year and a half, two years, um, you're going to have the greatest amount of fruit. And then over time, that actually fruit um, starts to evolve where you actually start to lose a little bit of the fruitiness and, and the pop in the wine. Um, so I, I hope I answered that. Uh, so are there any other questions? There is one there, Mark. Um, Carly, I noticed there is now a vintage year to the demi sec. Have you gone from no vintage to vintage? Yeah, Carly, great question. Actually, um, we had one bottling um, in, uh, when it was no vintage. Uh, um, I, I, think it, uh, I think it was over at least over a year ago. It might have been two years ago, but, but we got stuck in one year where um, we, uh, we, didn't, we didn't have much of, of the rosé and we actually timed it in. Um, and the following year when we brought in some more rosé, we combined um, the two batches. And that's why we couldn't call it a vintage. That year we couldn't, uh, it was non-vintaged because of um, uh, over, basically if you, you have to have at least 95% uh, of the wine in, in, the, uh, in the bottle to be from that vintage to call it the vintage year. So anyway, um, uh, so we we have been uh, on a vintage date. So we it was just, that that was uh, just one vintage. Well, com two vintages combined um, that we we're out of it. And and today everything that's in ISC that's in Tourage is vintage. Marianne um, on Facebook wants to know how you get the cork back in the bottle. Oh, the cork. 
Okay, great question. Is uh, and this is uh, um, so you, everybody got the bubbly pack, and uh, and that's why you got what you got in the bubbly pack was uh, you got the glasses, which uh, is um, I I love these glasses. I like the um, how the sparkling wine tastes out of them. I like it with still wine too, but I really like the sparkling wine. I like the sparkling wine in our other glasses too, but I. Um, I, I like these, they're, uh, and then, um, uh, but the question was related, uh, I lose focus, uh, was related to the sparkling, um, to a cork. And uh, no, the cork will not fit, fit in there, and do not use a still wine cork, because of um, me showing you the pressure, and that pressure building in the bottle, um, is, a. Uh, um, is is use your stopper that I said that you you should have got in your package, and then um, press it down and put it underneath there, and then this is going to hold your pressure um, in the wine that's in, that's coming out of solution like I showed you until you open that up again. I hope that answers your question. Are there other questions? Okay, I'm gonna unmute everybody who's here on Zoom um, so we can do a, a group toast. All right. <laughs> hmm. Now I can see people. Hey, Chris. I'm gone. Oh, sorry. Oh, am I gone? No, you're there. Okay. Oh, hey. All right. Well. Um, it, it, well, my close friend, I have to give so much credit to, uh, Chris has joined us. And, uh, unfortunately, we can't do a circle toast. She's the one that always gives me so much wisdom and knowledge. And uh, oh, Mark. <laughs> we can, let's uh, do our virtual toast to everybody and, and we'll, we'll click, clink in air. <laughs> so cheers, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cool. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Until next week. Love you. Yeah, cheers, and we'll see you guys uh, next week. Looking forward Absolutely. to being back at the winery. Yeah, so we are, we are too. We're hoping to um, figure stuff out and uh, when we can get open. And we're also working on some new um, ideas to do some more live sessions. So, um, awesome. awesome. See you guys next week. <laughs> Thanks for all your support. Thank, Thank you. Cheers, Mark. Cheers. <laughs> Stay safe, everyone.